Hey, what's up guys, BoHD here, and the iPhone 12 Pro has arrived, and even though this is just the box, and even the box itself is half the size of last year's, I am so excited for a new iPhone. Apple came out with a new Pacific blue color for the iPhone 12 Pro, but I decided to go with the gold variant because I've been on a big copper and mustard yellow kick lately, and the closest color we have to that is gold. Now you probably know a fair amount about the new iPhones, including the fact that Apple is no longer including a wall charger in the box to help the environment, or so they claim. And that's the reason why the packaging is roughly half the footprint as previous iPhones. So let's just go ahead and lift off the top of the box to reveal the beautiful gold iPhone 12 Pro. Right away, we can see the beautiful cream color on the rear of the new iPhone. You have those big camera lenses and you can just barely start to see the new squared off frame. Lifting the phone out of the box, we'll find that there's really not much else in here. We have a small packet of some paperwork, including only one Apple sticker this year. And last but not least, there's a USB-C to lightning cable, but sadly no wall charger. This will probably be the last year where we see a lightning cable included with an iPhone because Apple is rumored to switch entirely to a USB-C iPhone in the future. So I guess enjoy it while it lasts. But it looks like everything is just even more minimal than in previous years, including the protective film on the iPhone itself. There's just one protecting the front glass panel that we can remove to really admire the new design. And I say new, but this design is really just a rehash of the design that Apple first introduced with the iPhone 4, which many users like myself really admire even to this day. I think it looks very industrial and you have more surface area on the sides of the phone to actually grip the device. I think it's not as comfortable as previous iPhones, but having the extra grip will be beneficial. And of course, I think it looks better than previous iPhones. We will see the most prominent use of the gold coloring is in the stainless steel band that wraps around all four sides. It's definitely a fingerprint magnet, but gosh darn it, it looks beautiful. Even the rims on the camera lenses are gold, which uh, I don't know, it's a nice touch. I actually found that the SIM card tray is also gold. Um, even the portion that sits inside the phone. Now the buttons are noticeably more flat and flush than in previous iPhones, but they still feel pretty nice and tactile. One thing that I'm not a fan of, and that's way more prominent in person, is this millimeter wave antenna that's actually exclusive to the US. It's four 5G networks that use this technology, so it's a good thing it's here because it'll result in a stronger connection and faster speeds, but it's just a little bit of an eyesore in my opinion. I'm really um, I don't know, I'm just nitpicking at this point. Overall, the phone is beautiful, but uh, it's definitely not the most stealthy antenna we've seen in a mobile device. If you want some protection for your shiny new iPhone 12, I don't blame you. Pataka came in clutch. As I was editing this video, actually, I received a delivery of their new cases for the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 mini. Uh, these are by far my favorite cases. I've been using Pataka cases for whew, literally years now because they feature, first of all, they feature aramid fiber, so they're super durable, yet extremely thin at only 0.85 millimeters. And they support wireless charging and some magnetic car adapters. So they are 100% worth it. I'm not even paid to say that. They also sent me, it looks like their Mag Easy card sleeve. Uh, so basically Apple revived MagSafe, but in the iPhone by embedding magnets in the back of the new iPhone 12 models to allow for magnetic accessories like this wallet case here. So it just pops onto the back of the iPhone super easily with magnets, no strings attached. If you want a full review of this Pitaka accessory, let me know down below, but uh, it's super cool. I'll place a link in the description to all these products if you are interested. Now coming from the iPhone 11, I do already appreciate the high resolution Super Retina XDR display found in the 12 Pro. And I know there's been some confusion about which model to buy for one-handed usability. I will say that in the display department, the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are nearly the same. The only difference is the Pro model we have here gets a little bit brighter at 800 nits compared to 625 nits in the 12. And I will say upon first impressions, I do feel like I can type and navigate the phone pretty well with just one hand, though it's on the cusp of being just barely too big. And I have fairly large hands. So I'm definitely still looking forward to getting my hands or hand on the iPhone 12 mini to see if its 5.4 inch display will work better for me. Now, of course, this phone runs iOS 14.1 out of the box, which supports widgets. You got a new app library or app drawer and just a bunch of other features and refinements. It also packs the new A14 Bionic chip that uh, I think it's fair to say 
is the fastest mobile chip on the market. Even without as much RAM as some Android phones, the iPhone 12 Pro and its other siblings for that matter are gonna be on top of the pack in terms of performance. And there's a whole slew of new features and refinements made to the cameras, including the addition of a LiDAR sensor that's exclusive to the iPhone 12 Pro. This is something that we usually see in like smart cars or autonomous vehicles, but it's here in an iPhone 12 Pro. This will enable night mode portraits and unlock some new capabilities for augmented reality apps, I'm sure. Uh, there's also Apple Pro Raw support that will give you the control that a raw photo allows you to have while still using Apple's Deep Fusion software that automatically adjusts like brightness and dynamic range and other elements of your photos. Aside from that stuff, uh, you're still looking at a similar setup to the iPhone 11 Pro and its three lenses. There's a 12 megapixel main f1.6 lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide f2.4 lens, and a 12 megapixel f2.0 telephoto lens. What's also neat is that the main sensor can shoot at 4K at up to 60 frames per second, which is awesome. I mean, that's better than my DSLR. So I'm definitely looking forward to testing that as well as all the other new features available in this phone. The iPhone 12 Pro starts at $999. It comes in four color options and it supports all the major carriers here in the US. I bought this phone personally. I've got no ties or connections to Apple, so uh, I, I'm not biased. I just wanted to point that out. But if you're interested in learning more, I'll place a link in the description to check out the listing on apple.com. Let me know what you're thinking of these new devices, specifically the iPhone 12 Pro in the comment section down below. As always, I'm Bo HD from phonedag.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.